Welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture number 1.3 on integration. I am Professor Stanley Chan. So here is the outline of today's lecture. As you can see from this outline, we have covered two sections of this chapter. We have gone through the infinite series. We have talked about approximations and in today's lecture we are going to look at the integration specifically we are going to learn two things one is called the odd and even functions the other thing is called the fundamental theorem of calculus so to start with let me try to recall everyone's memory when you do integration how many ways of integration techniques that you can apply? Essentially, if you look at what you have learned in calculus, in your freshman calculus, or in your sophomore calculus, you should have learned two techniques. One is called the substitution. The other one is called the integration by part. I'm not going to go into details of these two very, very commonly used techniques. What I want to do is to mention two other techniques. One is called the odd and even function. And then the other one is called the integrating a probability density function equals to one. Now, certainly we haven't really talked about what do I mean by probability density function. And so we will defer the discussion of this part later when we introduce the probability density function. However, in this lecture, we can learn something very, very simple, but it will be very useful. It's called the odd and even functions. So what is an even function and what is an odd function? Suppose we have a function f. It's a function that takes a value from the real interval to another value on the real interval. We say that it is an even function when this function satisfies this property. Okay, so what is this property? This property says that if you take the function f evaluated at x, it's going to be the same as if you evaluate the function at minus x. So how do you visualize this situation? You can imagine that you have a function and then this function you have some value here okay so this is the positive x so this is x bigger than zero and now you want this fx to be the same as f at minus x so effectively what you want is that you want this function to look like this why well because if you have a point here uh, then you have another point here which will have the same value. Okay, so this is fx, and here is f minus x. So you, as you can see, an even function is really a symmetric function about the y-axis. How about an odd function? An odd function says that this function needs to satisfy this criteria where you are evaluating f at minus x. However, instead of just flipping over the y-axis, you also put a negative sign. So what it means is that if the function uh, has a positive side as this, then the negative side, it will be flipped over the y-axis and then flipped over the x-axis as well. So you will have something like this. Okay, so here you have fx. This is the point uh, here. This is your x and this is fx. And then this point is minus x, and therefore this point would be f minus x. Um, and then now if you flip it over, okay, then this value would be uh, minus f minus x. Okay, so you can see that an R function is a function where you flip over and then flip over again. So uh, here are two uh, very useful identities for the even and the odd function. For the even function, if you try to integrate a function from a, 
to a from minus a to a uh, then uh, this integration can be simplified to uh, two times uh, integrating from 0 to a now why is this true well if you're integrating the area here that is the same as you are just integrating here but two times that um, how about the odd function the odd function is actually even easier so if you try to integrate a function from minus a to a then essentially just integrating this area right and now if you add things up you can see that it will equal to zero so if you can identify the function being an even function or being an odd function then you can calculate the integral fairly easily here are two examples this is an example of an even function and here is a function of the odd function okay now what i'm going to do is to um, do some integration and demonstrate how these functions can be integrated the first function is this x square minus 0.4 times x to the power 4 this function is exactly uh, uh, this even function so how do we calculate this integral well uh, as you can see from the diagram uh, it is a uh, even function but before we realize that this is an even function we can also do some simple algebra to check this is an even function so you can let uh, fx uh, equal to this function x squared minus 0.4 of x4 uh, we want to ask uh, if this is even or not uh, and so you can evaluate f minus x and that will give you minus x squared minus 0.4 uh, minus x to the power 4 and you can see that this minus sign doesn't really matter because you're taking the square and you're taking the fourth power and so that will give you back uh, x squared minus 0.4 of x to the power 4 and uh, this is exactly fx okay and therefore we checked that this is an even function and since this is an even function then this integral uh, can be calculated as 2 times the integration from 0 to 1 uh, x squared minus 0.4 of x fourth uh, dx and uh, this integration uh, can be simplified to uh, one third x uh, cubed minus 0 0.4 divided by four uh, divided by five um, x to the power five, and then you integrate from zero to one. Okay, and then if you do some calculation, uh, that should give you a number uh, which is um, uh, thirty eight uh, divided by uh, seventy five. Okay, so that would be the integral. Now let's work on the second example. In this example, I have this function, and uh, this function has a shape look like this. And uh, you can see that from the diagram, this is an odd function. But before we conclude that, can we do some algebra to prove that this is actually a, a um, an odd function? So in order to do so, we can also uh, write down the function fx which is x times e to the power minus x squared divided by 2 and we want to ask if this is an odd function or not and so we can evaluate f of minus x that will give you minus x times e to the power minus minus x squared divided by 2 and you can see that this is going to give you x times e to the power minus x squared divided by 2 okay and so this is going to be a uh, minus f of minus x and therefore we have checked that this is indeed an odd function now being an odd function is very nice because uh, you're integrating uh, from a minus 1 to plus 1 of an odd function okay odd uh, function and we know that any integration of this is going to give you zero okay so the zero is the answer for this problem and you can see that although this integration looks very complicated if you if you want to calculate it from the first principle then you need to apply uh, either substitution or integration by part which could be a little bit tedious however since we can identify the being an r function we can simplify the calculation significantly all right 
So now let's move on to the second part of uh, this lecture, which is about a very useful theorem. It's called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, something that you should have learned in your calculus class, uh, but I will just use it uh, as a review to remind you what are the principles behind this theorem. It will be extremely useful when we talk about uh, uh, probability density functions. In particular, there's something called a cumulative distribution function where we are going to use uh, this fundamental theorem of calculus to do some calculations. So the theorem states the following. If you have a function that starts from a closed interval a and b to a uh, number on the real line, and it has to be a continuous function, okay, uh, then if you take the derivative of this integral, then it will give you fx back. Now let's look at the integral. This integral is from some number a to some number x. Okay. Now this x is matching with this x here. So it would be a function of x. What do I mean? Well, if you take this integral, this integral, you integrate everything, it's going to be a function of x. Okay. Now, certainly when you look at this integral, it will be an integral uh, integration in t. t is a dummy variable. And so after the integration, the t will be gone. And what will remain will be a function of x. Now, a is a fixed constant, which you can ignore it. Okay, so it will essentially be a function of x. If we change an x here, this upper limit will change, and therefore this entire integral will change. And that's why I say that it is a function of x. Since it is a function of x, uh, you can actually do the derivative on this function of x. Okay, so uh, if you do the derivative on this function of x, then interestingly, uh, you will retrieve this fx. Now here it is a ft, you integrate uh, and then you differentiate. So you do integration once and then you do differentiation once. And so this theorem says that if you apply differentiation and integration, they are going to cancel out each other's effect. One thing to realize is that this x has to match with this x. Uh, in the next slide, what we are going to show you is that if uh, this is no longer x, then uh, this thing here has to be also changed. The proof of this uh, fundamental theorem of calculus would involve um, some calculation, which I will refer you to our lecture notes for details. What we really need to know in this lecture is how to apply this fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, before we go to the example, let me point out one very useful corollary, which deals with the situation where your upper limit doesn't really match with your derivative. So in this case, your upper limit is gx, and then your uh, derivative is with respect to dx, and so clearly there's a dis uh, mismatch. However, you can apply the chain rule to do this calculation. Now, how do we show that? Well, we can start with this uh, uh, integration. This is a d dx, and then you have integration from a to gx. So we can keep the integration uh, a to gx, and then you have ft dt. And how about we take d of d of gx? Okay. Now, if you take d of dgx, that is not going to match with um, the, the original quantity that I want, but you can also do a chain rule to have uh, this d gx uh, dx. If you do that, then you can see that this is um, f uh, evaluated at whatever I have over here that will give you gx. And then this quantity is just g prime x. Okay, and so here you can see that this is the uh, right hand side of this theorem. It is a chain rule applied to this fundamental t theorem of calculus. It will also be extremely useful later on. Here is an example. We want to evaluate this uh, integration, and then we want to take the derivative. Uh, this function it looks a little bit complicated, but uh, later on you will become very familiar with this form. It's called a Gaussian random variable. 
uh, without worrying about the details of this Gaussian random variable, let's just focus on the integration here. The integration says that I want to integrate from 0 to x minus mu, where mu is some constant. Uh, and then afterwards, I want to take the derivative with respect to dx. So um, this is a very complicated form, but nevertheless, this is just some function f of t. Okay, and therefore this calculation is really d dx integration from zero to x minus mu uh, of uh, f t uh, d t, and uh, we know that from the previous corollary, this is the same as d uh, dx and then um, uh, d x minus mu. Um, I'm sorry, so this is uh, x minus mu, uh, and then d d of x minus mu and an integration from 0 to x minus mu uh, f of t um, dt uh, and so now you can see that this quantity matches with this quantity here and so that will give you f of x minus mu and then uh, this quantity will be what this quantity will just be one and so now we can substitute uh, this x minus mu into this f of t and so that will give you 1 over root uh, 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus x minus mu square d to sigma square. So that would be uh, the answer of this integration. Okay, so this is a quick summary of techniques that we are going to use in this course on integration. If you have any question, uh, please uh, send us an email or please pose your question on our Piazza forum. Thank you.